to find another one as well or try to find I something I mean, I think myself. it's just a matter of like looking at how much cash you're going to have to put into it too. Yeah. Like if it's a low entry fee, um, it may not be a bad deal. Like we have a lead on one and uh, I think where it is, South Tempe. Um, yeah, it's but, a, but it's a little, it's a three bed, two bath condo. It's not super big. The payment's like, I think like 13 or 1400 a month. Yeah. Um, it's like a 200. I mean, it just depends on like what type of property you want to be in. Like, yeah. What type of entry fee is there? I don't have a lot of cash. Cause okay. I have all my cash tied up yeah. in my, my other business. Yeah, for sure. I think that Businesses. one is, I mean, it'd probably be somewhere between 15 to 20,000. Okay. That one. Um, that I'd have to come up with all that. Like 15, yeah. 20. Yeah. So like it, you, so I need to do some other deals. Then. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah, that? But, but he wants to live in it himself. Um, I mean, you could still do that, but I mean, Matt got into one. How much did you have to put? Like probably oh, five no, to eight man. grand. Like, it had a special assessment in HOA. So I gave the seller four grand, but it ended up after closing costs. It was like nine grand. Yeah. All in. Either. Yeah. So I had to plan around probably 15 to 20. Well, I, mean, I would wholesale first and one pops up, get it. Yeah. I basically spent all my money at the time to try to get the house. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to come up with just your wholesale market. Yeah. I would just pull, like, we'll, we'll pull the first list in Tempe. Okay. So, so look for like wholesales first. Just to try yeah. To well, like you cash. can, you'll find like the way that we find our creative finance deals is from our wholesale marketing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, just, awesome. Just we don't pull. Home, like, couldn't make sense of it with a cash offer. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could, maybe it wouldn't have been a great deal, but take over the seller carry terms and give them some cash and they get more money when they call them. All right. So you can have stuff like that all the time. Let's roll. All right. So I, I would hold on to your screen for a second, Riles. Cody, I'm oh, only giving you that screen so that you know what people are saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what, what do you want to start with? So start you have to remember when you are in the front, you have to be uh, back, uh, back like a good foot or so. Can, can you do that pose for a little video? Like. There you go. All right, in, in the flesh, in the studio. All right, they're going to show me how to create my own account. We're going to go live audio. On, on the private page. Is that where we're going live? Or are we live? Might we are live. Already. Did you test the audio? So, oh, okay. He's asking people if they could hear. So there's two mics on your side, right? Let's we grab one. Here's the other one. Yeah, I'll get a slide in there. Okay. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. I stole the little foamy off that one. Is there another foamy, or do you want this foamy? Oh, I don't care about the foam. Will you unhook it? Matt, so Mallory's making you do projects at the house. Hey guys, we're getting started here in just a second. We're going to teach <laughs> Rylus. Rylus is our probate attorney. You guys have seen him on here a lot. Um, Rylus is going to start from scratch on uploading a list. Clipped in there really good. What? This headphone. Did you lose it? Yeah. I'm trying to unclip it for pace there. Thanks, bro. So we're going to get started here, and uh, I wanted to make sure the audio was working before we started doing this. Everybody knows Cody. Everybody knows Rylus. There we go. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Okay, so here's what, guys, here's what we're going to do today. We've got Rylus Dana, Dana in the house. Rylus is a pretty badass probate attorney, good friend of ours Thank as you. well. Thank you. Constantly on our show, constantly bringing value to the Facebook group. And the last couple of weeks, Riley said, hey, I want to start real estate investing. I want to start buying some more rentals myself. I want to buy some subject twos and I want to get into the game. How can I get started? And we told him, well, let's get started. We'll walk through the whole process with you. And then that way we can provide some more value to you guys in, in the same exact process. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to get a list. We're going to get you started on batch leads and we're going to start texting and we're going to go through that process and get you feeling exactly what it feels like. Awesome. All right. I'm excited. Really excited. Pace is like, you want to come in and I'll show you how to set set up your business. Right. So I was like, heck yeah. Love it. What so an amazing opportunity. So. I think a lot of people have a challenge. Like Cody and I have been teaching people how to get into this business for free for the last year or so. And it sounds like 
people really want to be shown exactly what to do because there's so many different people telling people to do it 50 different ways that it gets confusing and overwhelming. And sometimes you just want to be held by the hand and walk through the whole process. Yeah, I've been loving all your content. I watched the Wholesale Hotline when um, Cody and Jamil shared the prop stream part. So, so yeah, it. I'm loving all the, the content. All right, so what we're going to do is um, – what what te what um, list should we text today? Um, I think what we should do because Rylus wants to get a subject two in Tempe, we should pull a Tempe list. Let's pull a Tempe list. Let's do it. So, Cody, you don't do you want to walk him through that? How do you want to yeah, do that? Definitely. Anna's trying to get payment for property um, on this computer, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm signed into my account. I've created my account. Okay. Um, all right, so first step is actually getting the list pulled. So we're on PropStream, guys. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the search. We're going to pull up Tempe because specifically, Rylus was just talking about he wants to move from the current property he's in to Tempe. So why not kill two birds with one stone, market for properties to get wholesale and subject to or on creative finance terms. So then if he comes across something he likes that he can move into, he can move into it. So Let's just focus on that. Um, so let's do this. So you started with the city first. Yep. And then it do came I have up. something in there? Do I have a search in there? Or you, you no, he started, I just did Tempe. I just he's did starting a brand new. Yeah. So it's just Tempe. Yep. Which is cool because you can see it has 506 on the MLS, 51 mm -hmm. pre-foreclosures. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. That means there's 51 people that have high stress situations going on in Tempe right now. Yep. Awesome. 39 auctions, 11 foreclosures, um, and... 6,518 cash buyers. Yep. What's interesting about that and what that actually means, Rylus, is that means um, that's that could be people that just bought one property with cash, or it could be people that transferred their ownership. You're a probate attorney, so that happens all the time, right? So mom and dad pass away, somebody moves the ownership of the property into their name through, you know, the through probate or whatever. That shows up as a cash transaction with the county records. So that 6,500 cash buyers is not really 6,500 cash yeah, buyers. Per, per what? Per that zip code? Per that zip per code. What? Per what? Per 12 years, months. 12 months. Right. So what I would do is I would actually change the, those cash buyer, that filter, when you're actually looking for cash buyers, I would go in and say, who's bought more than two properties in a 12-month in a period? That's going to drop that number way, so way down. Okay. Like below 1,000. Okay. okay. We're not going to jump into that. But then you've got another 698 people have lead, liens, 1,178 houses that are vacant. Wow. That's what I'm looking wow. at. So right now with mortgage, somebody's paying mortgages on those, property taxes, they're paying utilities or whatever in the very minimum. That means there's 1,100 opportunities in your area. Isn't that cool to awesome. see? That's awesome. I think that you guys are talking about that on the wholesale hotline. So, right. And that's yeah. what got my attention like. I'm doing this. All right, let's go. Yeah. So that's the thing is like, look how big Maricopa County is. And just in this one area, you can see that there's 1,100 vacant. Wow. And so there's some overlap here too. There's some pre-foreclosures that probably are vacants as mm -hmm. well. And when people talk about stacking lists, that's what they're talking about. They're saying, let's take the 51 and add it to this vacant. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up getting like 10 properties that are vacant and in foreclosure. That's like a awesome. really hot lead, right? So if you're door knocking or if you're on a limited budget, you want to stack as much as you, as, as you possibly can. But Cody, what do you suggest we start out with today? I think, well, let's look at some filters here. Okay. So let's do, um, doo -doo -doo. so we'll just choose Vacant, which is obviously already kind of on there. And then we're going to do MLS status, not on the MLS, because we want to go off. I mean, you can work deals with agents sometimes, but. Path of least fun. resistance. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, um, why would you, if it's a good deal, go with an agent all day long. The challenge is most agents haven't been educated on wholesale or seller finance, creative financing, whatever. So you mostly want to go after the deals that have the least path of resistance, the least amount of friction. So that's why we'll keep it off the MLS status. So we're also going to do individual owned. Uh, the reason that I do this setting, Rylus, is because when you pull this list and you put it into batch to actually skip trace the records, they aren't going to be able to skip trace it if it's in an LLC or a trust. Yeah, gotcha. So it's just it's a waste of money to try and put it in there and, and pull the list. Um, you can mail to those people, but for this you know example, we're going to be texting. So we're just going to want the individual so we could actually get their phone numbers as well. 
So let's see what we have. So we have 376 properties that are vacant, that are not on the MLS, um, and that are owned by individuals and have 50% or more equity in Tempe currently. Awesome. So that would be a good little list to pull. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. We'll grab, go ahead and grab all of these guys here. And then we're going to go ahead and add to the list. Excuse your access to safety save. Okay, so I'll I'll join the full thing. Let's okay. do it. Let's okay. get it going. All right. So Tim B vacant list. Let's see if it oh it just did the 50. How do we set that? Let's go back there again. Click here. I, I thought I already joined. Oh, you already have a credit card. Yeah, there submit payment. Is that okay? 97 yeah. bucks. Let's do it. All right. There goes. That, that was your deal though too, right? Where I got something, a free right. trial, and then also. Access Congratulations. Full 10,000 10, properties. Property. Right. I'm a real estate investor now. <laughs> Boom. Yes. Boom. It's it official. Is. I figured Perfect. out I have an empty entity, an empty LLC to use for this. So oh, love it. ID, so. Perfect. All right. So now, boom, now we got those added there. So now we're going to go over to the My Property section. And here we are. So we have under, so where you're, where you were talking about earlier, Rylas, for those of you that weren't on, um, he thought he had pulled a list. So any lists that would be pulled from PropStream, you're going to see in this, uh, this section here under marketing list. So obviously that's the list that we have currently. So we're going to go ahead and export this whole list. So then what we can do is put it into batch. So there we go. All those properties are now exported. Exported where? So they so on an Excel stream. sheet. Oh, on an cool. Excel sheet. So now, because then what you're going to want to do is then upload those into batch to then be able to skip trace them. And then from there to be able to text them. Awesome. So now we're going to go over to batch. <laughs> Love it. All right. So. I'm going to give this to you to get that set up. So what I'm going to do is while he's, I'm going to take your screen off screen record. All right. Um, just so people don't see your, uh, all your private information. And uh, we will do, hold on. So tell everybody what was the list that you just pulled again? Uh, the list we just pulled was vacant prop vacant properties in Tempe with 50% or more equity in them. Does it give you, so Evangelina Gardner says, does it give you an option where to expect uh, uh, export to? Uh, I mean, you could save it to different, whatever folder you want. Uh, when we're specifically exporting it, it just puts it on an Excel sheet, which is saving it to the downloads on Rylus's computer. So then what we can do is then import those into batch, which is what we're going to do on the next step. Uh, coupon code is PACE, yeah. What that's going to give you is 500 free text. All right. Well, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So um, let's see here. Does, does Take it, it off uh, that screen so they don't see his he, card. Matt, will you put it on camera? Uh, there you go. Appreciate you. So... Um, what are some other lists that if you're just getting started out with, Cody, what are some really good lists that you can pull? Um, prop stream. I mean, if you're just getting started and have a limited budget, um, I think the best list that you're going to be able to do is the ones where you're going to be able to stack multiple layers of pain. So like Pace was talking about vacant um, and in pre-foreclosure, because the thing is they're making a payment on that property. Actually, they're not making payments because they're in pre-foreclosure and the property is vacant. So they aren't collecting rent on the property and they're making payments. So there's pain being consistently, you know, put on that person every single month. So that would be, you know, number one, high equity, vacant, pre-foreclosures. That would be a really good list to um, go after. Um, if you want to even, you know, get it a little bit more niche, um, you could do, eight, you know, property values of 250000 or less, specifically for Arizona, obviously, and somewhere like Tennessee, where, you know, in Memphis, where properties are going to be cheaper, you just have to do whatever like that median price point is that price point or less for your market. So if you don't know what that is, you want to do a little bit of research and just Google it for your market. You know, what is the median home price point in 
Memphis, Tennessee, or Dallas, Texas, or Phoenix, Arizona. So Phoenix right now, it's about, I think it's like 285 is what our median price point is right now. So whatever your state's median price point is, is where you want to stay at or under typically, because there's going to be the most amount of buyers for you to be able to wholesale the deal to. And there's going to be the most amount of buyers if you're going to flip that deal for the end buyer to actually be able to buy your property in the fastest amount of time. A couple of questions. What do you do when skipping a list with two or more owners? Two or more owners. Um, uh, what you can do is, you know, have a virtual assistant uh, clean up the Excel sheet and put owner one and then the property address on the Excel. And then you could have them put owner two in the column underneath it with the property address and you skip trace both of them. Those are probably harder deals though, aren't they? Because it's an extra layer. Yeah. Like, it's, I mean, it's unrelated parties or. Yeah, it can, you know, it can make it a little bit more. Those are messes I yeah. deal with. When yeah. There's multiple people. Yeah. Cause then you're contacting one person. They may want to sell it. Other one doesn't. So it's kind of a weird situation, but that's typically what we'll do on those. Yeah. So, um, people are asking for prop stream. Prop stream is $97 a month. Um, and I, our free trial. So the normal free trial for prop stream is a week. Our free trial extends it for an extra uh, week on top of that. And then, um, let's see how many lists are we managing at one time? How many lists? I mean, um, I could answer that in like actual records of data because you could have dozens and dozens and dozens of lists, but we have right now about 1.2 million records that were. No, like how many different lists? Like this, we're pulling um, a 10B list. Oh, okay. Like, 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 like the actual niches? Yeah. Um, I mean, probably about 10 to 12 because I mean, you can niche it down into more and more i mean on bats like we have we have a lot like we have under just one category high equity but then we have 20 lists under that high equity because there's some high equity that we have in phoenix and then we have some high equity in tempe and then we have some in apache junction so it's as many as you want to narrow it down to so cool. and how you know if you want to stack those lists then you create a whole new list you're you know you stack a list of um, people that may be in probate and in pre-foreclosure and the property's vacant and there's high equity. So like you, yeah, I mean, I literally all hundreds. Those probate people. Yeah. I definitely want to hit. Well, I don't know if they're already in probate at this point. They already have a probate attorney at that point. So right? you'd so probably, records. Um, you'd probably want to find, I mean, Maricopa County, what successors data you could probably get because those are the pre-probate. Yeah. Successors data is really good. So guys, before we jump into batch leads, which he's just finished the to setting it up. Um, we're going to ask, answer a couple of questions. So Daniel Hanneman, how much value do you put into zip codes? I see you chose a city he wanted to move into, but is finding hot zips something of major value? I would say yes, but primarily you want to ask your cash buyers where they want to buy. Yeah. This, this zip code has Arizona State University in it. Yeah. You know, so it's not it's a hot zip code. a uh, random zip code there's, as well. So. There's a lot of hot chicks there. Therefore, it's a hot zip exactly. code. Definitely it's, need to, definitely need uh, to be, if you're looking for buy and holds, be near a big college is everything in Tempe is always sold out. It's a hot area all yeah. the time. So if you get a deal in Tempe, you know, it's easy to sell. People will overpay for them. So it's a good place for you to start as a wholesaler. You know, if you get something under contract, you're going to sell it. Awesome. Right. Like Cody and I've got a prop. Uh, we're doing a student rental right down the, like right in that area. And we're going to kill it on that student rental. Stoked. Favorite, yeah. favorite deal of the last few months for sure. Yeah, it's a, I, I think I walked that one with you guys. On, lemon, um, lemon. It was on one of those episodes of uh, The Real Deal. Yes. I was there. Thank you for the shout out, by yeah. the way. Appreciate you. Um, how many got, how many, how are you guys managing your list when additional properties are automatically added into prop stream daily or weekly? How do you manage the workflow of getting those skipped and over to batch? So don't bring up VAs because everybody here does not have VAs. Guys, we yeah. have a team of VAs. We've yeah. are built, we have a scaled business. So when, we're going to try and answer these questions, not as we are currently doing it, but as you are, you're asking the question, Waldo, in a very basic sense, which means we got to give you a basic answer. So um, first and foremost, you've got to, you've got to uh, stack your list so you know that you don't have duplicates. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're going to want to do is upload all of your lists into Batch. So you have the stacker and then what you're going to want to do is pull a list without skip tracing it of the new data. So if you're on prop stream and you have, you know, new pre foreclosures, take that list of new pre foreclosures, upload it into batch and then stack it up against the list you already have skip traced. 
because there could be a chance that of 100 properties that you already have skip traced and you upload 10 new pre-foreclosures, one of those pre-foreclosures you might have already skip traced. So what BATS is going to do is save you money from re-skip tracing that. Oh, so if great. you upload, exactly. So upload all of your lists that you have skip traced into BATS. So then whenever you get a new list, you put it into batch. And then how often is that? Is that like a weekly thing? I know you guys are skilled, but like, yeah, like yeah, I was like just me, trying to like think of like, what? like someone like me, should I be so, refreshing my list? If you're not wanting to spend a ton of time on it, you could do it every other week, every two weeks. So do okay. it twice a month, pull, you know, pull the most recent pre foreclosures for the last couple of weeks, pull the most recent, um, you know, if you're getting tax delinquents, pull the most recent of those and then upload those in there. Like you could, if you really want to, you could be doing it every week, but if you're yeah. the one doing it, yeah, do it so every that, other uh, week. Every other, okay. Yeah. It's not going to take a ton of time, but it just gets tedious if you're doing it every single week. Okay, cool. But that's what's great is, you know, you're going to be able to save yourself from spending money. Like, so looking at it down the road in the future, the reason why you do this is like, so for us, where we have over a million records that we have skip traced in batch, whenever we pull a new list of foreclosures or um, probate or anything like that, we can just put those in the system and we can get all the phone numbers and we don't have to re-skip trace them because we already have the phone numbers on another list that we've already pulled. So that's what's nice is you can stack them up against everything that you've already worked on in the past. So great. Yeah. So guys, this is a three three part process. So we pull the list through through PropStream. We have that list. We then use batch skip tracing to do our skip tracing. Once it's skip traced, what does skip tracing do for you, Cody? What do you get? What, do you, what why do you take a list mm -hmm. and why do you skip trace? So all that happens when you're first pulling a list, right? So like PropStream, you get the data. You get First, the person's first name, their last name, their property address, their mailing address. And then you're going to have, um, you know, if you pull more information, like amount of equity or things like that. But really what you want is the property address, their first name and last name and their mailing address. And then what you're doing is you're putting that into batch to skip trace. And so what's actually happening is batch's internal system that they have set up uh, where they get essentially it's like credit bureau of data. So they get some of the highest quality data where they do the research essentially on that person's name, first name, last name, property address, and mailing address, and look at phone numbers associated with that person's name, property address, and mailing address. Yeah. And then it pulls the most recent, you know, updated phone numbers for landlines, mobile lines, office lines, and puts those all in there for you. So then you can call them, you can text them, you can market to them. Cody, novice question. Stacking is one of the many services batch leads you uh, has is there a separate charge for stacking your lists so batch has a, a base charge that you're basically what you're paying for with batch is you're ha you're housing your data there so you upload all of your lists into batch and you're paying a monthly subscription for the system itself so you have access to text but you just reload those so you know you're uploading t more tokens to have access to you know more use of texting is how the texting works. And then for batch, as far as stacking and housing your data, it's just a, based on the amount of data that you actually have in there. Okay, so based that's for the charge. The charge. Yeah. Based on the data. So if you have you know, 10,000 records, you're going to be paying a lot less than if you have 500,000 records. So it's just the amount of data. That we, you're like for us, we pay the top, the top tier because we have a million plus records, right? But what's, gr what's great is it comes with your uh, litigator scrub for free. So what is a litigator scrub? This is important for everybody to talk about because there's a question here. Somebody asks, um, are you, are you text blasting? Okay. There's legalities with text blasting. Okay. The legal, and you and I are working on getting that yeah. attorney onto and, the show. And the reason I'm here today is because I've, I've watched the other shows. I've watched the other content where I know enough about this. Right. So like willing to get into it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've watched some of like the batch, you know, how you actually have to click. You've got to gotta it, click. Right? That's click to text is different from scheduling a blast. Yeah. So that's, that's going to keep me, me safe, right? Yeah. As far as violating laws. Yeah. It's the TCPA and, um, compliant. I've heard about the litigation scrubber. Um, explain that, Pace. So litigation scrub basically goes through and um, goes through your um, list that you're about to text and it scrubs everything and checks if those people have ever filed a lawsuit, because if they're litigious, you that, definitely don't want to be texting or reaching out to them. Such a great feature. Such oh, a great feature. 
It, and th the fact that it's inside of there as part of your subscription is absolutely yeah. huge. Because as a lawyer, I get the people that call me. I see some of those litigious people. They're like, yeah. hey, I, I pulled this list. I got all these people. You know, that yeah. They just look for those types of opportunities. So yeah. that's great. They eliminate that. Yeah. And, and normally, because you know, for people that don't know, you usually have to pay for an extra service. So when we were using our previous text platform, we would have to actually pay per text to scrub it for, you know, do a litigation scrub. And it, it was like a tenth of a penny, but when you're sending millions of texts over the year, it starts to add up. So that's something that, that is included in here. So. so here, Daniel says, well, isn't me sending, so we're talking about the 500 free text messages, right? And then he's saying, well, isn't me sending a text to 500 people um, technically a blast? No, it's not, because actually you're going to see us physically do it. We actually click the mouse 500 times. Yeah. And it sounds tedious, but it, it's done in about a minute to two minutes. Um, we have three VAs that are currently texting because we're texting thousands of people a day. So not only are they texting for maybe 30 minutes a day, but then they're managing. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're managing the text <laughs> messages back and forth because once it's set off, now that conversation started, you can now start answering through your computer and not have to blast yeah. anything, right? So am I going to need to set up another phone number then, like a, a Google mm -hmm. voice number or something No, like the that phone then? numbers are actually through Batch. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you'll, you'll buy your phone numbers through Batch, and what's great is they actually limit the amount of text that can be sent per phone number. So Because obviously, if, if you're AT&T and you recognize one phone number sending 500 text messages within five minutes, you're probably going to flag that as spam, right? So Batch does a good job is they limit it. I think it's 50. So I think it's 50 or 100 texts per day per phone number. So okay. then you can't put yourself in a situation where you're getting your numbers blocked as spam. But they also have a feature in there where if it does get marked spam, they'll let you know so you stop using it. Because what happens when, when, the, when your phone number is marked as spam, if I text you from that number, you're not going to get the yeah, text. The, the at and is going to block it, not allow it to go through. We, had a, we had a major problem last year um, with our cold callers. So we had, oh. I don't know, 10 phone numbers or so. Yeah. And our cold callers were using those phone numbers over and over and over all day long. And we were saying, Cody comes to me. He's like, I want to shut off our cold calling. It's not working. Yeah. And we, we couldn't yeah. figure it out. Our answer rate was horrific. Like we'd call thousands and thousands and get maybe like a hundred people answering. Yeah. So what happened is we actually sat down with Evo, who's one of the owners of Batch. And he sat down and showed us, he's like, you here, let me show you how to get 400 phone numbers that you'll use 20 today, 20 tomorrow. And then you filter back through those phone numbers. So mm -hmm. the cost of 400 numbers was like a couple hundred bucks. And we've never had that problem ever again. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, very, very simple. So basically, and does call tools automatically filter through our phone numbers for us? Yeah, so you set up like a, a caller, you know, a group of phone numbers and it filters through them. And then if they get marked as spam, it'll automatically remove them. So then you just replace them with clean new numbers. Right, so here's, here's a question. Can you change uh, numbers every month? Yeah, you can. Um, in Batch, it doesn't really make sense to do that because it'll tell you. It'll tell you if your number's being, uh, if it's, you know, hey, just so you know, your number is being perceived as spam from carriers. So then you just know to release that number and get a new number. So you don't need to get new numbers every month. It's just get the new numbers when it says your numbers are being marked as spam. Yeah, so people, um, I had somebody complaining about like the monthly charge that Batch has. It's like 97 bucks or so, 95 bucks a month or something. And I'm thinking for that cost, you're getting a litigator scrub. You're getting all this, all this data and all their tools are in there for free. So it comes in and says, hey, your phone number is going to get spammed. Like other services that we were using before don't have any of this stuff. And it was costing us deals and deals and deals. So here, here you are buying all, it'd be like buying all this amazing ingredients, pulling the, the, this list and spending money on these amazing ingredients to bake a cake, but then you don't have an oven or your oven's broken. It's like, how do I actually make this make me something, right? This is all the pieces in one place. Instead yes. Instead of wasting the time, saving money, other absolutely. places. If you're going to get or... gourmet ingredients, which is your data, which data is absolutely super important. If you're going to spend money on good ingredients, you want to make sure you have good, a good kitchen set up with the right utensils so that you can have a good product come out on the back end. What people do is they try and save money in the wrong places. And then they're saying, I'm not getting deals. I've been wholesaling for five months. And like, how much money are you trying to save yeah, spending save, five months of your life? Bucks. Yeah, You save 50 bucks losing 50 grand, yeah. right? So um, anyway, so 
The, I, uh, I think some of these questions will get answered by like actually going through some of it. Yeah, guys, we're going to go through. The, we're actually going to get him going. We're going to start texting, and it's going to prompt. You guys will see his screen again. But a lot of these questions are going to be answered. Um, will changing numbers cost me extra? I think it's a dollar per number. Yeah, it's a dollar per number. So we're, uh, I, I know that. Talking to Evo, I know that's true. Um, let me just see here if we have anything before we jump into the meat and potatoes. Because now we're, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. I'm going to answer a little bit less questions verbally. I'll answer them tech, like texting. But I want you guys actually working through this so people can see. So let me clear out some of this stuff real quick. That's good. That cleared up a lot for me. I didn't realize that Batch holds the data. That mm -hmm. makes yeah. sense. So yeah. that's what I was going so You can keep ask, track of like, all of it in there. Is there something else I need to manage this? Yeah. Uh, so what I was doing is... before was I was using Google Drive, and I would just have a mess of marketing. Of I have a marketing folder, and then just every month and all the different lists, and it's it's a lot more messy, and Batch is or helps organize it a lot more. I want to jump on Jan. So Jan, it sounds like you must be... Um, you're a VA and you're working for other clients, which is cool. We, we appreciate how hard you work. She has a good question. So she says text blasting is efficient. Um, yeah, we agree. We used to use Roar. Yeah. Roar was allowed us to text blast and not manually text it, but it's not compliant. Yeah. So when you are growing your business and you're scaling, we know several people, some people in LA, he's yeah. really good friends with, and a handful of people here locally who have gotten gotten into litigation and spent thousands of dollars defending themselves over text campaigns that they did through Roar because Roar, you can press one button and it just blasts 3,000, yeah. 5,000 texts or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, and I can tell you from the attorney side, you know, they're seeing dollar signs. There's oh, like, 100%. Oh, yeah. like, we got these guys that are just hitting all these uh, uh, texts. So. Yeah. yeah, so while Roar and other text blasting services might be efficient in terms of sending out the most messages, Response rate, what happened with yeah. our, when we went from Roar to Batch, what happened to our response rate? So on our response rate, and, and it's really just a matter of the you know Batch staying ahead of the curve on what changes in the market because Roar used to have a 20% response rate. So we'd send out 1,000 messages, we would get 200 messages back, which is amazing. So, But what started happening is more and more people started blasting. Carriers get smarter. They recognize the blast messages that are going out. Response rates start going down to where we were you know, six to eight percent response rate. So you send out the same thousand messages, send the, spend the same amount of money, and you're getting sixty to eighty people responding. So when we switched over to bats, what we noticed is because it's individually, you have to, you know, text. So the carrier recognizes that as a more legitimate text message versus yeah. a spam text message. So what we've seen is our response rates went up to now twenty to twenty five percent. So now we, we're spending because you, if you look at it. With another service, if you're getting only 10% response, you send out a thousand messages, you get a hundred back. With batch, you could send out the same thousand and get double the response rate. So that's what you have to look at: is okay, yeah, great, you could send out more, but you're you're spending more because you're not getting the response rate. And who knows, out of those people that you didn't get responses from, those could have been actual leads for you to buy their properties. Yeah, a couple a couple of things that are really important for people to understand as well. So. Um, do you check? Do you regularly change your text messages, meaning the wording that you send out? Do you change it a lot to avoid being seen as spam? Here's another reason why we use Batch, because if you're in Batch, they will send you an email and say, "Hey, here's what we're noticing in terms of what's being kicked back by the cell phone carriers." So let's say I'm texting people have AT and T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint. These carriers are trying to protect their clients from getting spammed all day long. So they're filtering out certain words and batch. Oh, look right here. This is amazing. Pull that up. It says effective immediately. And I don't know if Cody can share that. Um, I could probably. I saw certain words that are flagged. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so what? So batch actually sends an email. Obviously, you guys can't see this, but they sent an email over and they basically said, hey, guys, don't use the words selling, interested, purchasing, owner or offer or anything coronavirus related and your text message. So they're constantly giving you updates on best practices. Did you ever get a text message like that from Roar or an email from Roar? No. Because they're not customer service facing. That's why Batch is so amazing. And they are our friends, but we and we do appreciate them. But they, it's amazing that they are coming out to you and saying, hey, Rylas, you need to change your text messages because they're not getting through to the carriers. I suggest you use these words instead of these. 
Yeah, that's great. So for that monthly service, we again, yes. what you're getting. Yeah, so it's much. stupid. It's right. absolutely stupid. So again, with Roar, when Cody told me, when we switch over to Batch, Cody was actually a little bit hesitant to switch over to Batch because he's like, dude, I've got all of our VAs working on Roar. I've got all this stuff working on Roar. I know Roar. It's like me and my companies. I'm always like, all right, let's go here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, want... We just got to figure it out. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, I got to make new videos, new training, new, you know. So, so he switches over and he sends me a text and he's like, but man, our response went, <laughs> rate went up 23%, like almost overnight. So just that alone Forget about all the other tools. Just the response rate alone has gone up really, really high. So um, uh, let's hammer out three more questions and then we'll jump into the, the meat and potatoes of this, guys. We, we appreciate you guys hanging tight. How do, you, how do you screen your numbers used for cold calling, Cody? Screen your numbers? I don't yeah, really I think he, the they're saying like, how do you know which numbers to call? Oh. Or how do you, numbers which to which use? Which ones are bad, I yeah. guess? Um, well, I guess hopefully I'm answering your question, but... Um, we use call tools. So call tools will let us know if the numbers are bad. So, and they'll automatically remove it from a phone number that we're calling from. So, and we buy our phone numbers directly from call tools in the system. So we don't find our numbers anywhere else. We actually buy the numbers from call tools. And then if the, if they say that, Hey, this number is coming up as scam likely on people's phones, they'll automatically remove it. And then we just replace it with another number. So, so Carlos Balzan, Pace, is it true that since we are not selling anything, that's not considered soliciting, so we don't have to run the list through the DNC? Um, you can make that argument, but what do you think a judge is going to say when you come down to actually litigation? If you're blasting 500 times that you're not selling anything, or how many times that's right. what they're going to say? Like, why, what were you doing? This is Carlos, that came from so, an attorney, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know, like people can argue anything in a yeah. lawsuit, right? Yeah, it doesn't mean they're good arguments. <laughs> yeah, right, but it can so, cost you money. So the right yeah. thing to do is to make it go through the DNC. Okay. Yeah. And again, that's why I'm here. You know, like I've, I've been doing my research. I wouldn't be setting up these accounts if it was um, opening myself up to liability. Yep. So Jay Johnson, we're going to jump into the initial message um, and we're going to see what our, our text messages are. But the answer is yes, we keep it at 160 characters. The reality is you don't want some big lengthy thing talking about, hi, my name is Jane Smith. I'm a, a local such and such down the road. Like you're, you want less fillers and you want to grab somebody's attention really fast. Yeah. You don't want to have a 300 you know, word type of thing. So as a probate attorney, I get all these messages too. So this is fun for me. So yeah. like I've been on all the lists because <laughs> my name shows up uh, a lot of times on properties. Right. And um, Zach makes a really good point here, by the way. So Zach Fisher, um, you guys see him all the time on my IG. Good friend of the show. Awesome guy. He also runs Astro Flipping. For anybody that no doesn't know what Astro Flipping is, go check that out. Um, I believe that it automatically cycles through text templates, which it does. And we're going to mm -hmm. set up text templates with you shortly. So I'm trying to set the runway for our takeoff for everybody to understand what we're doing. Um, and also, I like getting these questions beforehand. So when we get to that point, we know to pause and go, hey, guys, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? So um, I, I appreciate you throwing that out there, Zach. Batch leads will allow you to set up a, a handful of different templates. In fact, they have their own templates in there so that you're filtering through messages. It's not the same message over and over and over. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da, yep. So Lu, Lu, Louis Montoya says he got the same email from Batch. Guys, it's the, the value with Batch is unparalleled. Absolutely. Um, let's see. I don't understand why there are people out there that would sue someone that's trying to make a living over a text message. So people sue they're trying for to anything. make a living too. So they law degree and they're trying to justify all that money they spent and all their that <laughs> that's the a really years good of their point. life. Right. Uh, for that law degree and they're seeing these real estate investors driving in their Maseratis and they're going f that dude <laughs> right you know what's interesting rila uh -huh. so you're an attorney so it's good it's good to get this feedback from you and i want you to like hear my feedback about attorneys we forget that business uh, attorneys are business owners yeah we forget that attorneys are out to make a profit as well yeah they're they're, they're looking for um, paydays yeah they're looking for paydays right so. it's kind of we think about doctors attorneys and other kind of professionals like so, that as people that aren't thinking about money. Today we're running data for real estate. My world is usually running data for um, uh, lawyers, you know, like, um, like for example, like the other side, like, um, Hey, look, there's this many people that the banks are calling. Usually they go after banks and people right. like that. 
look, they say, look at the numbers, you know, look how many people there are, look how many calls there are, look at uh, what the settlement is per call. Love and that's it. what they're looking at. All right. So let's jump through a couple of things. Also, I don't want to be charged for additional text on one message. Um, let's see. Yep. Zach is the man. Absolutely. He's the man. Um, last question. We're going to jump into the meat and potatoes, guys. How can we avoid having multiple numbers we text from batch leads and call from call tools? Can we link them together? They don't link together, but that's where I've been asking Jesse and Evo to come out with their own calling system, which they will be. They, no, they're already, so they're already working on yeah. batches call, coming up with their own call system. They're, they're telling me how, when it's coming out, and I'm not going to let you guys know that because anytime a developer tells you it's going to come out in a week, you got to 10x that. Um, <laughs> but they've been working on it, and I've seen how much money they've spent and how much time they've spent on it. We will 100% seeing what Batch brings in terms of value on the texting and skip tracing and all the other things. I already know we're going to jump ship from call tools and jump onto Batch's call, call system. It's, I already know it'll be hands yeah, down way 100%. better. Um, all right, guys. So let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this. I'm going to put uh, Rylus's screen back on here, and Cody's going to go through, and let's start cranking this out. All right. Okay, so we're not going to do the tour, but all right, so let's jump into it. So we're going to go to um, the import. I got it. I got it. Okay, so we're just going to grab, this is the Excel sheet that we took from PropStream, so we're just going to grab that. Drop it in here. Easy enough. Easy. I think I can handle that. Yep, it's not too, it's not too hard. You're going to hit next. And then you're going to map the data. One thing that's nice about Batch, some other systems don't do this. So like for me, I, I know this because I've used other systems, but it maps most of this for you. So you can get, so you look at property address, got it, mapped it, city, state, zip, they got it. And then we want to make sure the mailing address. The reason you want to make sure the mailing address is mapped is because if it's a rental property, um, low battery. I, my uh, cables plugged in out there. Let's get can Matt. Matt can, Matt can grab it. Um, Matt, can oh. we have a cable. So while we're doing that, real quick, a um, couple of questions. It's it's plugged into the wall. A couple of questions popped up while that's going on. So can you do a? Um, is Call Tools better than Call Rail? Those are completely not two the different, same system. Not even close to the same functionalities. No, Call Rail is going to be more of like a uh, system that you use to be able to track uh, individual calls that are going out um, and to be able to record those calls and then to use those as uh, phone numbers for marketing. So if you're doing direct mail, you'd use a phone number from Call Rail to then have those phone numbers go, um, you know, be linked to a certain place. <laughs> Call Tools is a dialer system that you're it's dialing multiple numbers at the same time. So it's two different types of systems. So it maps all the data here. We're gonna go next. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a list. So basically the difference between the list and the tag, shout out to the batch team because they did, they spent an hour on here going through all this and helping me understand it and clean up my mess that I made in here when I first set up batch. But basically imagine a list is like your filing cabinet. So like this, the list that we did is a higher equity one. So we're going to name it like high equity. So imagine you open a filing cabinet and it's your high equity filing cabinet. And tags is going to be like your individual list within that. So we're going to have it as list name as your high. Um, this is literally what ours is called. Arizona high equity. Yeah, set me up right. Yep. Set me up like the pros. And then, our ta and then tag, you could do Tempe. Uh, we're going to, I do ours by the, the month too. So I know when these are pulled. So what month are April, April, um, Tempe high equity 2020. So now we have our filing cabinet of Arizona high equity properties. And we have our tab of our April Tempe high equity properties. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So now I don't do anything else on that. Now we're going to submit that. Boom. So now what it's going to do is it's going to get that uploaded in there and then you could check on it. We did a smaller list for this example because if you do too many records, it'll take a little while for it to upload. So boom, already done. So 376 is a small list. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a bigger list is, you know, 5,000, 10,000 records is going to take a little bit more time for it to get uploaded in there. Um, I... 
What, so what size of list should I be doing? So I'm gonna, I'm running this. This is a side hustle for me yeah. until I get someone else full time on it. Yeah. Uh, what size of list should I be working? So I, what I would ask you is, you know, how many hours a week would you be, um, you know, texting? I guess. Um, well, I, I have ten hours. Ten to hours work on total, total, right? So maybe if you're doing an hour, hour and a half, you know, three four days a week. Um, you know, having a list of 5,000 records in there that are skip traced, you know, you could work through that probably for a good couple of weeks, you know, probably for almost a month, actually, if it's you're about, only doing so that. about 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 would be a good amount to have in here because it'll, it'll hold you over for a little while. Okay. Definitely. So that's uploaded. Good to go. Now what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go here. We're going to go to filters. So I'm going to select all everything that we have here. And then what we need to do is we need to take action and we're going to skip trace this. So this is what's nice is, you know, we have it all in here. It's going to keep it organized for you in that filing cabinet and then we can skip trace it. So we're going to go ahead and skip trace it. Um, estimated total. Let's do it. Okay. We need to up add. Um, can you take it off the screen? Sure. It's going to show his card info. I, but but I want I want his credit card. <laughs> uh, I won't get you very far. Because <laughs> yeah, so this will it'll be fifty six bucks to get that um, plus my um, hundred dollars a month for yes yep. Yeah. So this so the skip tracing you pay for by the amount of whatever you're now, skip tracing. Is there um, if I do more records, does the price go down or is it always fifteen cents? I believe so. Is I think his if, credit is his credit card going to actually be shown? I just don't want it on here just in case. I mean, he doesn't care. Okay. Just kidding. He does. If it, it won't pull, I can oh, guarantee you his credit well, card won't I'll pull. Watch it. Okay. Someone charges all. <laughs> High equity. Um, My so wife's birthday is coming up watching. in four days, so I think I need to buy her some flowers on uh, Rylus's uh, yeah, credit, credit card. card. Okay, so we don't even have the card on here. Let's see what this does. Please add to your wallet. So we'll need to. We'll go ahead and add because it only has a fifteen dollars balance, which is what. You okay, got perfect. So while he while while they do that, guys, I'm going to jump in and answer oh, a couple a questions laptop. while they do that. Um, actually, hand him the laptop. Have him go through adding up the the deal. So what what package should I join? I haven't told you how I'm going to work it. Um, I, I would, would probably myself. I would stay on the trial and go to monthly, and then do bronze. I would do bronze. When you're actually going to do it, um, is that right now though? Do I need it in my trial to do that? No, no, because you can do up to five thousand on here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep your trial going, and okay. then go go to your go to your package. So, um, I'm going to go through and answer a couple questions while you do that. You have to upgrade to add a balance. God, that's what. That's why. We, so, yeah, if he's going to do more, we need to go do the bronze. Okay, that's cool. Let's do it. Okay. So if you guys want to use the if you guys want to use the Good. promo code, Let's do it. oh perfect. So his it's not it's not popping up. Perfect. Yeah, it's four. It's cool. So if you guys want to use the promo code, the five hundred free text, he's still going to get those five hundred free texts. It's just that oh, you good. had to pay for you just had to pay for the skip tracing. Okay. All right. So now we can go back to our filters. That makes it so I had to pay for the skip tracing to get the numbers and all the right. So it's two different things, right? Yeah. Batch le batch leads is what sends out the text messages and manages the litigation scrub and all that kind of stuff. Then batch skip tracing is how you get the information. So what okay. we just did there, that fifty six dollars was skip tracing, tracing all that. Yeah. Yep. So this is this is basically it's just adding your credits over there. So so is that balance? So this is just going to add a balance to your um, to your account your wallet. Yep. Exactly. And then that's how. Like any skip tracing or any any phone numbers that you're going to pay for through here is going to uh, allow you to do. So now that we did that, now we can actually skip trace it. Do skip trace. So there that is. Oops. And we added the balance, so we're good there. So Arizona high equity. So this is a question people get uh, ask all the time, Rylus. When I'm texting these people. Should I be also cold calling them or should I be texting them and then cold calling a different list so I'm not inundating them? Here's the secret to real estate investing, consistency and timing. You have to consistently be hitting these people. If you think that you're texting these people and not calling them is going to slow down the amount of calls they're getting, you are absolutely out of your mind. Every investor in Phoenix, everybody, everybody in 
Phoenix is going after Tempe because it's a great area. So everybody's texting, everybody's calling. There's no reason you shouldn't be doing the same thing. And here's another reason why. Some people will actually answer a text, whereas they would not answer a phone call. I'm a guy that will never answer a phone call, but if a text pops up, I'll actually reply, right? And then there's people that will answer a cold call that will never look at a text. They're typically a little bit older generation or maybe people that have Androids. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, um, but also door knocking as well. So Matt Beard, who's actually running the camera, is one of the best door knockers ever. Um, he, d- Matt ran our door knocking team for a good amount of time. You, we're calling and texting people and then not getting any reply. You knock their door, they answer the door. Yeah. So you use all marketing methods you possibly can because you never know what kind of person is and how they're going to react. Uh, I've tried to do the same thing in my businesses as well. You want it to be like it's a sign that you showed up, right? If you if they saw your text and then you call you know, or something like that, they see multiple places. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Cody, so how many not- text messages would you suggest we send a day? Let's say I'm a brand new investor. How many hours you're going to spend? That would be my question. Right. So you guys, you uh, so uh, Maurice, you heard Cody ask Rylas, how many hours a week are you going to spend? And you said probably 10, right? Yeah. To start. Yeah. Okay. Love it. So what, what was your answer to him for that 10? Um, I was basically, instead of how many texts to actually send, it's going to depend on your responses that are coming back, right? So I, what I was telling Rylas is do 5,000, get like 5,000 records. So you have 5,000 records to work with. And then out of that 5,000 text over, if you're going to spend an hour and a half doing it, just text as much as you can that hour and a half. So I don't really have an exact number because if you text for that hour and a half and 35 minutes in, you are texting with someone that seems like a hot lead. You got to get on the phone with them. If you're a solo investor, you got to get on the phone with them. So it's, it's more important of can committing the amount of time you want to spend on your business. than it is on like how many texts actually send. Because once you actually have an operation and you're you know, tracking KPIs of what are, what's my team doing, then you want to look at how many texts are going out, how many are coming back in, how many are they putting in as leads. But if you're doing it by yourself, commit an hour, two hours, or however long you're going to be texting for, and you're, you have to click the text. So click the text, click the text, text, and as you're doing that, you're getting responses, respond to those texts. So it's just however much you can do in that time. If you know that for your work schedule, you're only going to be able to commit five hours on one day of the week, say on a Saturday, text all five hours and do no. as much as you can in that so when time. you're texting, you got to be actively ready to respond. Yeah, because you'll see when we start texting here, people are going to reply. You'll send, yeah. We'll send all these text messages and within 30 seconds, you'll have 200 text messages back. What if someone replies later? You can reply back. Later, yeah, you can get back in later. Just, uh, yeah, 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 just log in later. See what's sitting there. I personally think that if I'm going to start and I have a nine to five job, text messaging is probably the easiest way to get started where I, it's kind of like a set it and forget it. I could wake up in the morning, text all these people, and then throughout the day, log in like every couple of hours and see what responses I have. Whereas if I'm cold calling, I've got to be tied to that phone the whole time. Yeah. yeah. So for me, if I was going to start back over, I would never start and cold call. I would start as a texter or as a door knocker, depending on my budget. Door knocking, I feel like I'm probably going to get a deal just because I'm good at talking to people. I'm going to get a deal like within a couple of days. Text messaging, you could get a deal right now today, Rylas, or it might take you two or three weeks to get a deal, right? With cold calling, I probably would never start cold calling, understanding the leverage of just hiring um, a cold call company that now we have, we use a company called VA Hub Online that they hire onboard, train, manage, do the scripting, give us a weekly report, all that kind of stuff for somebody cold calling for us. And I am just a hundred percent hands off. I have never once known any of my cold callers names. I only know the name of the person who owns the company, Daryl. And we reach out to Daryl when we want to add more callers. Yep. <laughs> That's it. I have that written down from one of your other live streams too. Yeah. So we, like, we can get into that another day, but I would suggest let's get cranking on this. Um, this is this is really good stuff. All right, so we have phone numbers. We got them skip traced. So now the next step is actually putting them into a campaign. So now from the same section here, we're going to select all of them, and then we're so going to. So it'll have all these multiple numbers in, yep. or it'll hit the the first yep. one first. So so what it's going to do is some of those might be landlines. So you can it'll uh, only text to the ones that are mobile or can be texted to. 
And then the landlines, it's not going to text to. So that's where you want to market from different channels because you can upload this list into call tools or another calling system and then be able to hit those landlines that way. Yeah, okay. So now what we'll do is we're going to add it to a campaign. So we're going to create a campaign. Let's call it Tempe um, High Equity. Let's, let's do a name similar to, what is it? April. April uh, Tempe high equity 2020 and then oh i haven't set up your let me set up your settings i forgot i'm so used to just setting it up on ours so let's go to our settings here and what does that mean the settings yeah um you have to choose your state so it knows like what state you're in got it okay so we're, we're going to do that now so obviously we're in arizona our market is phoenix um, or call forwarding number. Do you have a call rail number or a Google voice number? I don't. Anything? I need to get one. Okay. We can do a Google voice number probably quickly. This is good for people to watch this. Yeah, it is great Every, because it's everything. Yeah. yeah. Just to have something for now. Uh, do, do, do. So people, this is what we're talking about. You guys see me posting a lot on my Instagram about we're showing you step by step by step. Like we're literally doing it on a screen share for you guys so you can see it real live and in person. This is about as in person as you need to get. Your account isn't Google Voice ready yet, bro. Uh, you don't have a G Suite here. I'm just going to make it easier and use, uh, I'm going to use one of our call rail numbers just because it'll. Be Are faster. you going to log into call rail? Yeah. You want me to take it off your screen sharing for a second so you can log in? Yeah. Okay. So what Cody's going to do, what Cody's working on right now is he was going to go to a Google voice number and allow that number to be the one that forwards to your phone and for, or forwards to your system and you can manage all that stuff. But your Google suite's not set up for that. Yeah. So I have to, call, I have to set up through Google. So I need to do... If yeah, you, uh, Cody will maybe show that to you a, later. Or just use a call rail. Just use another... I Google. would suggest call rail. CallRail is great. We use CallRail for a lot of different things. So like, you know, Wholesale Hotline, uh -huh. that phone number that people call in, that goes to CallRail and then forwards to my phone number. Okay. And that makes it so people can call the number without actually knowing my cell phone number. I'll set, I'll set up one of these later. Right. I don't understand what's going on. Is it just a weird view? Yeah. The screen share thing. It's tripping out. Is it no. too big? No, this is weird. There we go. This is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Got it. Okay, cool. So um, let me answer a couple of questions while we're doing this. Um, William says, I don't know if this happens for anybody else, but after skip tracing my list, I don't recall batch providing numbers. Hopefully you go through this. Yes, we are, we are going to go through that, William. That's a really great question. Um, I love these live questions because these are questions you don't even know to ask necessarily, Rylas. Yeah. And I, I appreciate everybody asking questions because these are people trying to get into the business as well, or maybe have already done some of these steps, but nobody was able to answer those questions for them yet. So um, love the question, William. Thank you so much. So Steph uh, SJ said, asked me, why do we not go after sellers with Facebook ads? So I was part of Homevestors, the We Buy Ugly Houses company for two years, and I was spending a lot of money every month, $20,000 in advertising every single month. This was years ago, right? And we spent a good amount of our money on Facebook ads and pay-per-click. Phoenix, Arizona is incredibly expensive for just one lead is a couple hundred dollars. Sometimes your lead's like $300 to yeah. get somebody to call you. So with us, our leads are way less expensive, way, way, way less expensive than that. So um, it's not that you can't find sellers through pay-per-click and Facebook ads. It's that why would you go that route in a very competitive market? Typically, the markets that work for Facebook ads and pay-per-click, which is like, hey, we'll buy your house cash and it's all over your website and all that kind of stuff. Those are small markets like Flagstaff would be very successful with that, right? Okay. Maybe Tucson would be somewhat successful. But I even think the size of Tucson is too big of a, a town to really go after. That's just too competitive. Yeah. Um. Cody's also managing one of our pro our construction projects right now via cell phone. So guys, you guys are catching the real deal right now. <laughs> what, what actually happens on the day-to-day? -day? How does call tools compare to Mojo? 
Um, I think as far as like the difference between Mojo and Call Tools, like Mojo is great is a all in one system for you could you know have kind of a semi version of a CRM so a customer relationship managing system where you have your leads that live in there um, and then you can you know also cold call from it but if you want to cold call on a higher volume you need a system like call tools because so are my um, are all my leads gonna live in batch or do some of the leads live in your your calling leads live in the so you want to have you want to have all of your leads live in batch and then they can visit other systems so you can move you can get texted to in batch you get they texted get to in batch and, and they get called place. to from another platform that you use yes okay Let's see. It. Matt's being the MVP he's setting it up on car I don't know why it's not opening on your computer I thought maybe they were doing maintenance but he got it up on his computer thanks Matt. What do you think of follow up boss? Oh, follow up boss, that must be a different program. I can tell you, um, Cook Teeny, I like that name by the way. Um, I can tell you, Cook Teeny, that I'm connected with a good portion of real estate investors nationwide. I have heard of follow up boss, but not anybody at a high level is using it. And that tells me something, right? That tells me like someone's done their research and right. or they would have done the research. And if and then word gets around really, really fast. Yeah. Right. When people are happy with a product, people tell I would never do a live stream about batch leads if we didn't like using it. Right. Um, I would never use it. I would never talk about us doing deals with a platform that is going to lead people down the wrong direction. And I, I don't know anybody that's using Follow Up Boss consistently and at a high level. So hopefully that answers the question. I that, would just that probably was the Follow Up Boss, and you just shot his dreams down. Right, and then uh, so Sherpa, um, Sherpa is overpriced and just like Roar. So here's the challenge with Sherpa. I know I've met the owner. Uh, they're not, he's not customer service fa facing. He's actually somewhat rude. I've met with him face to face, and I've seen him treat his customers not well. I've personally seen this. And so I told him, I said, look, man, I, I just can't like suggest your product to people because you want to have customer service. It's the most important thing because things do go wrong. In fact, didn't we have a day last week that batch was down? Yeah. What was going on? There was doing some system updating. But did so they tell you that beforehand or what happened? Yeah. Yeah. We got an email letting right. us know what was going on. So when on. they have a problem with their program, they're letting you know, hey guys, don't worry. We have to go through maintenance on our yeah. site. Um, I, we apologize, yada, yada, yada. Jesse actually called me too. He's like, Hey, like the so owner know. of the company <laughs> calls you. That's pretty amazing, right? That's good customer service. Um, which, what list would you be adding to batch lead stacker now from scratch? I'm sorry. What was the question? What li list The you know, the number one question when people start going is all about lists, Yeah. right? You could do a 25 hour show. Literally you oh, go on for 25 hours for lists. And then somebody's going to ask you a question, go, what list do you pull? The ne that's le next, <laughs> the next question. question. I'm not criticizing. I'm just letting you know that it's one of the most commonly asked questions. What list are you pulling? How are you pulling the list? What are you doing with the list? All that kind of stuff. It's so confusing and nobody really answers the question, I think, clearly. And that's why the questions keep popping up. What list would you be adding to batch from scratch? If you were starting all over, I think is what they're asking. Pre-foreclosures. Vacant pre-foreclosures, yeah. vacant mobile homes. We like mobile yeah. homes. We like flipping mobile homes. We like buying them. We yeah. like cash flowing them. We, I'd say 20% of our rental portfolio is manufactured homes. And in fact, I wish it was 80%. Because they cash flow the best. Cash flow the best. Let, like the repairs on them are less. The demographic that is buying them and renting them out are not as discerning about like little stupid things. You know, it's like, oh, the baseboard is messed up. And like the three, four hundred thousand dollar home buyers are more, they're more picky. And the buyers that are, Buying our mobile homes, they're just excited to buy they're, the home. They're yeah. excited that there is baseboard, period. <laughs> so um, very different. I hear Matt laughing about that. Um, yeah, so guys, it all comes down to like customer support and getting love, right? So same thing with Rylus. Like when Rylus is running his probate business, Cody's just filling out all this stuff. You guys can see it on the screen. So I'm not going to walk him through exactly what's going on. You guys can see it, but I'm going to talk over while Cody's doing this. Customer service is key to everything you're doing, right? And it's the same thing when you're talking to motivated sellers. It's the same thing if you're a probate attorney. You need to come with, you know, gentle hands and understand people's situations so you continue to get referrals back. Yeah. Right. So again, uh, PropStream versus Propelio. 
More people are using PropStream than Propelio. I love the guys at Propelio. Daniel's awesome. You're very, very nice guy. But I'm telling you, more people are using PropStream. We, we like it more. Um, I think that Pro Propelio is a really good source. But we just use PropStream. I, I think it's just because there's a couple tools in there we like. And our team, like our boots on the ground in our office, they prefer using PropStream over Propelio. Cool. So the next thing, can they see the screen? Uh-huh. So now what we have to do is actually set up the message templates. So basically this is going to be like what you choose the message to automatically be able to send. So when you're clicking to send it out, we're going to create those templates right now. And I normally have them all save already saved, but you know, we have to create uh, new ones here. So we're going to just call this one high equity. So guys, this is a part of the, the live that is super important for people to watch because this is a question that's going to pop up all the time. What, what do, do I say? Yeah, what do you say? That's what I'm getting ready for. It's like you're going to go talk to the pretty girl at school. What do you say, man? What's your I, opening I, line? I definitely don't know. If, if, it was, if I was Rylas, the way I would open every text is, hi, I'm an attorney. Do you want to go on a date? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah people love attorneys, right? They just love attorneys so much. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, this is really, really important. Cody's going to set this stuff up. You guys can see the screen very clearly. I can, I'm seeing what everybody else is seeing. It's very clear. So why you're going after high equity text. Yeah, this, this is, is just, just a, a template. Equity list. Yeah, it's just a template to text out to. Because you can, I mean, if people want to, you know, get super niche and if they're only texting the pre-foreclosures, maybe they want to cater the message a certain way. We don't really cater it any way to, we just have a, basically the same message. I mean... It's, so cook teeny. Um, no, we do not use REI skip. We use batch skip tracing. They also, so what's cool about batch skip tracing is that batch skip tracing owns batch leads, which is the text platform that we're currently utilizing. We can put our list into batch leads non-skipped. And before we text to that list, it will ask us if we want to skip trace it and it will skip trace it inside of batch leads, which is a huge benefit weren't you taking we, you were taking our list before from list source yeah. or for prop stream mm -hmm. going into batch skip tracing and then going to roar oh yeah no well it was actually even worse than that because what i was what i was actually doing was i would take i would pull a list from list source so that that's just you know the the names the addresses to then be able to skip trace it so i'd pull that list and then i would have to organ I had one big huge Excel sheet of all the lists that I'd pulled and I would scrub I would have I would have to have a virtual assistant do it but I would have them make sure that I'm not repulling the list so manually in Excel scrubbing against another Excel sheet so I'm not pulling the same records again to re-skip trace those records. And then once I did that, then I put them into um, a system to actually skip trace get those back, then go and actually upload them into Roar, then to start texting. It's like when I tell my kids, <laughs> you don't appreciate like what it was like waiting for your favorite TV show to yeah. come every week. You don't yeah. realize all the steps that are involved. Yeah, you yeah. You just get a click right into it. Yeah, and people are like, oh, there's too many steps on Batch. I'm like, at least it's all in the same place, and you could do all of it because you could do the filter setting and actually be able to make sure you're not re-skip tracing instead of using an Excel sheet and it's just a mess yeah. and it took a and lot longer. You're getting into these messages here. So you're yeah. just starting with, hi, is this your property? Yeah, I, so the reason I do that is that we get a higher response rate and then it's it's a it's a better relationship for the carrier because we even, we'll typically get higher response rates than you know, if we're just asking if they would sell their property, because I'm just asking if it's their property. And a lot of those words are banned, so we didn't yes. touch on any of those yeah. banned so, words. Yeah, and sometimes um, I'll still have, you know, because it's going to cycle through these messages, so it's not going to send the same message over and over, because what I'm doing right now is this will be a message that's sent, another one, and I'm going to create just like five templates here. So I did hi in, the, in that first one, like, hey, first name um, uh, is the property at address yours. I am looking for more rentals in zip code. Okay, so rentals wasn't flagged. Yep, so it's, you know, hey John, is, it, is the property over at 123 Main Street yours? I'm looking for more rentals in 85201. Okay. Boom, easy. So, and obviously it implies that I'm interested maybe in buying their property because I'm looking for more rentals. Yeah. 
So that could be a message you could put in there. There's no secret message though. That's like the biggest thing that I want to get across to people is there's no secret. If the someone's heart, interested in selling, screen, don't yeah, show our message. yeah, it's like, it doesn't matter. Like you just change it up. So, um, hi, first name. Um, I am looking for more uh, homes in Evangelina Gardner says, do you guys have texting banned words in Spanish? Caca, bendejo, and a couple other ones I know are banned for sure. I, <laughs> no, I don't know. We do have two girls on our staff um, on our team that speak Spanish, and so they help out with all that kind of stuff. And then Andres, one of our VAs who text messages or does our texting, he speaks so, Spanish, and so like he helps okay? out with that stuff too. I'll throw it in there sometimes. Like If you're doing it on a, like a mass scale, it's going to affect it more, but Again, this is only going to send so many times. So say out of 50 messages. So it's basically the same message I had as the first one, but I put hello yeah. instead of hey. And then just for sake of time, let's do, um, let's do, we'll do hello again, and then we'll do first name is the property at address yours. I am looking for more potential student rentals. Cause we're in Tempe. Okay. So this I don't know, I've never done that message. I'm just like, well, well, like we're it. looking at Tempe, like let's see. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Obviously if you're gonna text to other lists, you'd wanna change that and not, I mean, I'd probably send that if you're sending it to Apache Junction, right? So that's it. And then so this backup template text is so, say for example, if it doesn't have a first name for some reason, if there's an error, it'll just say, hi, I'm interested in a property you own and just want to see if you ever thought about selling. So that's just a backup text. Just, just have in one case. backup yeah. that's all you need? Yep. So we'll just create that. Please add at least 10 SMS. 10. Oh, this is interesting. This is a new feature because I the last similar. campaigns. Oh, new features. Um, um, let's make this bigger one more time. People are still saying. I think a lot of people are watching this on their on their phones. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, so we gotta. Oops. Oh. Here's the oh, Oops. Hold on a second. Sorry, guys. Uh, there we go. There we go. Perfect. So um, it wants us to do ten of these now. Hold on a sec. We need. I need to get him back on there. So go back to prop stream. Or no, sorry. Go to. We had it in a. Is it minimized? Yeah, you minimized it. Sorry, I'm not. I'm still getting used to Mac. If you just swipe up with like all your fingers. There it is. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. Matt. Can you text me some of your, like, obviously, if I was on my computer, I would have just copied and pasted them from mine, but can you text me some, like, other text things? Can't believe it makes you do 10 now. I was just trying hey, to Rose, do less. Where you get example. back to that screen. That's the good thing about Max is you can set all this stuff up. Boom, right there. Should not be more than 70%. Nice. All right, this SMS message is 72% similarity. So another thing Batch does is help you make sure that these messages, this is actually a new feature. The phone companies are probably doing that then. Like, yep. hey, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the same as. Yep. 
Um, address yours. Looking for a home in the area. That we'll do that. Okay, those ones look okay. You want a different format. The student rentals got applied too. I know. I like your student. We thought yeah. that was so unique. I know. Okay. So we'll listen. Add, we'll add and let's add another one and see. So we need ten. So let's what is it? One, two, three, four, five. Yeesh. Okay. <laughs> so sorry for the wait, guys, but we're texting ten. Yeah. Why is it? It's not letting me click on here. Um. Do we need to hide that, or is it because of that? Weird. It's not letting. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, dang it. Why is it? My old thing. So it's letting me. Sorry, guys. I had to go uh, get my charger for my phone. Or not my phone, but my laptop. I'm curious on why it's doing that. Frozen? Yeah, made it mad. It's letting me up here, but not select on these guys. Um, what do you ask if the seller asks where you get your number? What are we telling Andres to say about that? Um, data, yeah, what was it? Data. Um, that, that's probably a very I common to, response. I have to look, right? yeah, have to look at our script. So I've heard pros and cons of using your company's name in the text message to build credibility. What are your thoughts on that? I think that you can do it as long as it's not the actual company that you're going to buy in. Maybe you... Um, we're the local home buyers. Yeah, well, I'm a local home buyer or something like that. Like, hey, we're a ma small. You don't want your actual home buying entity given out. It'll just make out. somebody um, reach out or maybe make a Yelp review or something like that. Um, everybody, yeah, I deleted the Dropbox file on my Instagram and on my Facebook. I need everybody to like understand. There's always somebody that abuses it. Okay, so. In this situation, I've never had this happen, um, but I actually had somebody uh, take the Dropbox link and they were sharing it around the internet with other Facebook groups, acting as if it was their recordings from their acquisition department. And they're like, hey, if you guys want to pay for my coaching, blah, 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 blah. So somebody was taking my Dropbox link where I was sharing selling conversations it. I was having with sellers and selling it. So I'm like, you know what? This is why I, this is why I primarily only sh uh, share this kind of stuff with like our students, is because those guys sign a document stating that they're not going to share anything, and it, when we try and give away like high level stuff for free, people just steal it, That's and then too bad. It, dude, it's unfortunate because there's all these people like, I was getting messages from um, people that have been in the business for three, four years, are listening to me talking to sellers, and they're like, bro, I've never heard these kind of conversations happened. You, This is why you guys convert at such a high level. No, so I'm true. like, let's share it. And then there's always some butthead that has to go in and do something and try and steal our stuff and screw it up for everybody else. Yeah, that, that's how I uh, started tuning in. Listening yeah. to all that gold. Um, I think maybe on their update. You want, Why don't you reload the website or reload the page real quick? I did. I'll go back to it. And we also need to verify his email real quick as well. Because he's letting me on this. Nina, yes, I am only from from this point forward. I am only going to share recordings with sellers with my actual students because they sign a document saying they're not going to share any of that stuff. And I try and share it on the Facebook group. And I was thinking like, okay, well, there's a filter. You have to be, a, you have to apply to being in the filter, Facebook group, something. Okay. So here's, here's what was happening before. Before I had a Facebook group, we've only had that Facebook group three months. So what happened is before the Facebook group, I would just tell people, swipe up on my Instagram if you want to hear my latest recording with a seller. Okay. And what happened is my competition was downloading the Dropbox and they would hear the conversation with the seller and they go, I know that seller. They would take my recording, send it to the seller and say, 
hey, did you know Pace was recording your conversation? He's a piece of crap, blah, 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 blah. And the seller says, actually, I gave Pace permission to record. <laughs> um, and he, tell, he told me that somebody would call me and, and share this information. And, um, you know, we I ended up buying the house, but it taught me something. I was complaining to um, Jamil and saying, dude, these people just take my stuff and they abuse me. Like, it's crazy. And he says, yeah, man, nobody respects free stuff. Nobody respects anything that's for free. A, that's a good point. And it's like, it's unfortunate, but it's true. He's like, you need to create like a Facebook group where you can at least filter out those kind of people. So I create a Facebook group where people are required to give their email and their phone number so we can at least filter like the, the bad people out to a certain degree. And then boom, I share my recordings again and somebody takes it, turns it into a way for him to monetize on our, our own hardworking backs. And then that's from us giving more value to people. And it's like, this is probably why people don't do as much valuable like sharing as Cody and I do because people just steal it all and then like make it sound like it's their own. It's crazy. Yeah. And there, there's always going to be um, haters. There's always, um, um, I don't know, like, like leeches, right? There's always, that just shows you're going the right direction, I think. Yeah. And you're, you're still giving in a lot of ways, but yeah, you have to be careful and what you put out there. So I'm trying to create a community like this for the legal community as well. So that's what some of the challenges is. is how, much to, share, yeah, how, how much, much do you share? How much do you share? I am doing an event. I'm doing a live stream Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share all of my stuff on a screen share. I'm going to show all of my documents at least that way so they can see it all. Yeah. But I'm not going to let everyone have the full download and everything. Yeah. I'll, I'll give them enough of the idea. Yeah. But I'm not going to do the full download. Do you yeah. do we need to set up the templates before we do it, or can that's we? That's the only way to text is having the templates to text from. Okay, and you've already you've already gone through and verified his his email. We could do that right now. Um, okay, if you want to go to your email, that's and right. just verify that one here. Yeah, it should be right in there. Okay, verify. What is this recent one? Mm. Sorry, guys, this, this is what we get for bringing value to you kind of randomly. But um, yeah, guys, I, I, everybody keeps is now talk, talking about it. No, I'm not going to give anybody a, a, um, access to my recordings anymore unless you're one of our mentor or one of the people we mentor. I'm sorry. Like, I've tried every which way. A non-disclosure does nothing. Like, I can't. And what do I got to do now? I got to go after you and sue you and spend money? It's not yeah, worth it. Yeah. I'm not going to like... It's crappy that people treat us with crap, like crap. Like I go out of my way to sit down with a seller and get a conversation recorded and like oh. ask for permission and upload it and do all that stuff. And somebody is like, oh, I'll sign a non-disclosure. Uh, Great. You're not doing that, but you just launched the step by step by step. I haven't been able to, to watch all of that yet or those things, but you showed at like title companies and those things. So yeah. You're still showing a lot of things. It's just that right. one specific part. The parts that I'm going to keep privately are going to be um, so I, I just had a conversation with a seller in their house where I told the seller, I said, Hey, look, I train a lot of people. I train my team. And then also this will be good for you to reference back if you have questions about our conversation today. And so I record on my GoPro, the whole conversation with the seller in the seller appointment. And those I'm just going to share with my students, like everything else I'll share with everybody else. But student wise, like if you're in our mentorship program, then we'll share that high level stuff. But it's just you get you run into personal information with people and like one of the recordings like says people's name, the address and like we've had people abuse that like people will go out of their stinking way to take advantage of, of anything. So um, do you already text you texted yeah. Jesse? Yeah. Okay. And what's he saying? Oh, he hasn't said anything yet. Okay. Is, is well, they just did. Up? Yeah, no, it's just locking up because they just did an update on their messages, which I actually like that what um, what I was mentioning is I was setting up um, my templates with only like five. So it's requiring you now to do 10. So they're forcing you to actually be setting yourself up for more success is what they're doing, which is actually really helpful. Is he texting you back or no? If, if he's being responsive to you, then I'll jump into some other questions. Um, okay, so let's, a let's answer some questions for a little bit. Um, and maybe what we do is we do a part two of this. Because we're already at like, yeah, we're at an hour and a half. So let's okay. do part two.
Yeah, so let's get to this point. We set everything up and then um, Perfect. let's at least answer some questions real quick and then we'll do a part two. So, and that will be another hour and a half as well. Perfect. That'll be good. Cause then we can focus on what to do. The actual uh, conversations. Yeah. All of that. Start that. Yeah. That'd be perfect. Okay. Um, how does one get into your mentorship program? Guys, if you want to get into the mentorship program, it's sold out already for April, but we've got um, some openings opening up on May 1st. Um, and uh, our team will give you a call and see if it's a good fit for you. Let's see. How many text so messages? Do they do? Email you if they want to get in. What do they do? do they I, I the gave list? them a link. So that you have to link. join the list and then my team reaches out to you and see if it sees a, if it's a good fit. There's people that it just isn't a good fit for, to be honest. Like. Um, you got to kind of be ready for it. Anyway, Daniel Mendez, on average, how many texts do you guys send before getting a lead? Before getting a lead? Um, I think an easier way to answer that is how many text messages do we send on a day on an average basis? And how many text, like warm, qualified, ready to like have a conversation leads do we get? So I only really have a lot of data from Roar because we're still new to Batch. So we haven't really been tracking like the KPIs for, for that yet. But okay. for Roar, we're usually getting a deal every 20,000 text messages that we send out um, is the number on actual text sent. And then as far as the leads, we're usually getting um, from Roar, because this is where our data is from, is we're getting one lead for every thousand texts. Right. But I know we're getting that more than that on batch, but we only have two weeks of data. So are we still? Try, try the template thing one more time. Pace, can you call me? And um, I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I don't have time to call anybody. If you if you shadowed me for a day, you would see that not only am I booked out meeting to meeting to phone call to phone call, but I also have a lot of overlap. And like even Matt Beard, he came here to film footage, and he's double booked in here. We love well, we love Matt first and foremost. We want to hang out with him, but we're con I'm constantly overbooked. I'm constantly double booked. People are always trying to talk to me. Um, same thing with Cody. If you looked at, here's Evo calling. The owner of Batch is calling, guys. Hey, Evo, you're on Facebook Live, bro. How you doing? Hey, a um, to couple of questions. Um, a the to login in. for that yeah. one computer, we'll yeah, figure that seriously. out later. But I think Cody was texting you because one of our, we're having a glitch on setting up the templates on Batch Lead Stacker. Hold on a sec. Yeah, basically just when we were trying to do you want me to step out and talk to him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're you're yeah. So um let's well, just we'll you, let's just you and chat yeah. I chat for a little bit, Riley. So guys, anytime um you guys need help with a deal or structuring something. Um Matt, will you put it on the center camera real quick? Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. So um I mean, Rylas, you hang out with us all the time. You see how much we're always trying to will and, and we're willing to help people all the time. Yeah, I've, I've seen you help lots of people. I've seen it. Right. So if you guys want help, the challenge is when you give something out for free, everybody wants it. And so I have a girl on my team. Her name is Hiel. If you guys need something, um, I'm going to give you guys cell, her cell phone number. Text her. Um, a lot of times she'll help you structure deals. She'll help you understand things. Um, she can relay messages to me, whatever whatever needs to be done. Or um, you guys see, I answer all your questions live on Sunday service. Um, a lot of times, Rylas and I are in the studio on Saturdays. We do Friday night features. And then on Monday, Wholesale Hotline. By the way, Max Maxwell. Do you know Max Maxwell? I've heard the name for you guys. So Max Maxwell, probably the most widely recognized guy in wholesale because he's so good at, at marketing. He is. Uh, he's coming on Wholesale Hotline on Monday, which is going to be a really good show. Um, can we, can we kind of preview part two of this? So yeah, like, let's do so it. We're going to, I watched one of the live streams. I saw someone, you know, text through this. Right. So I kind of got an idea of that. So leads are going to come in. What else do I need to do? I got to set up a number is going on my to-do list. I got to get a call rail account or something like that. Right. So I have a separate number. Right. And, um, what is, what is part two going to look like? So part two is going to look like this. We're going to, I appreciate you directing it that way. That's a great, that's a great segue. So what we, you and I will do, Cody probably won't be in that one more than the first 20 minutes. And what we'll do is have Cody go through exactly how we set up, set up our text um, um, templates. He'll go through, because he wasn't actually prepared for this. I had yeah. to, he wasn't prepared to do this at all. So he's like, oh, well, I, I got to go back and look at our scripts because he doesn't memorize these scripts, right? They're changing some somewhat frequently. 
So what he'll do is he'll come in, set up your scripts. He'll set up your, um, hold on, let me remove that from the stream. Um, he will set up all the templates and then you and I together, Cody will step out and you and I will start texting people and I will show you exactly how to reply to people. And then once we're ready to get somebody on the phone, I will call them right there live. Because what we do is if somebody's, we're texting back and forth with somebody, the second they're like, yeah, I would be interested or yeah, I am selling that property or hey, yeah, I am ha having issues there. We immediately get them on the phone as, as quick as possible, right? Because you want to talk to people. That's the fastest way to getting a deal. Okay, so that's going to be part two. You're going to show how to talk to people and then um, and then you want to schedule something else or you have your certain... Uh, we could do, a, we could do a, a three-part series where we do this part is setting it all up and then part two is we text and text and text until we get a couple of leads. I get on the phone and then you and I set an appointment and I'll take you on an appointment with me and we'll hopefully go and lock up a deal. Okay, great. Um, I, I want to do that. What I'm worried about is this time. I don't have time to go on that appointment. Right. And so, or maybe uh, maybe part three, that's uh, well, whatever you want. Or, or someone else goes. Of course, yeah. Um, but my system, the way I'm going to set up my business is where I just turn those over to you. Oh, I love it. Okay. So is that like high L? Is that what I do at that point then? When someone's well, interested in it? With you, with you and I, I mean, you've been, so you and I are doing deals together already. Yeah. Um, so it's it'd be the same thing. Like your gal or whoever's running your thing, reach out to me directly. Okay, so they reach right. out to you. They there's like five. They, okay. Yeah, there's like five people in the state that can reach out to me directly on a deal. You would be one of those. I feel honored to be on that. Well, bro, I feel, I'm honored to be your friend. So then We've I would. A couple of just this week have been kind of interesting. Yes. Fun in, fun in my world, too. So well, life is good, bro. Yeah. So you and I, you would generate the leads through texting and either managing them yourself until you hire somebody. Once you hire that person, that person can reach out to me and ask me questions anytime. And then when we set up an appointment, I will go on that appointment with either that person or on my own. And I will lock up that deal and you and I will just do a deal together. Cool. So I'm, I'm going to focus on just that front end part of it. Working the leads, Love getting it. the list, getting, um, I guess, just warm leads. Yeah. And I, I tell that to people all the time that are worried about not being good at conversion, right? So there's three parts to wholesaling. There's lead generation. There's lead conversion, which is the sales process. And what do you talk to the seller and how do you negotiate and how you do all that stuff? And then there's dispositions. How do you make money on selling that or having an exit strategy? So that's why Wholesale Hotline is so cool is because you have Brent Daniels, who's great at lead, con lead generation. You have me, who's widely recognized as a lead converter. And then you have Jamil, who's like nobody better in the country at disposition. They're selling 90 deals a month. So um, that's what you and I are going to do is we're going to do part one is setting up the system. Part two, we're going to convert um, a deal. And then part three, we'll do your journey on selling that deal and actually getting a check. This is awesome. That'll be fun. Yeah. Real fun. Well, I think we'll actually probably break this down into four. No, okay. Fair. One is setting up the system. Two is actually sending texts and getting a lead and how to talk to sellers. Part three would be converting it to a contract. And then part four is taking that contract and monetizing on it, on it through either selling the deal fixing and flipping it or buying and holding it, depending on what you want to do. Because a lot of people don't do this that are wholesalers, but we convert bad wholesale leads into subject to and seller finance deals. And so we're going to, we're <laughs> focusing on Tempe. We're going to get a deal in Tempe and high likelihood we'll get a subject to or a seller finance deal in Tempe that you can get your hands on. Yeah, let's do it. Do you have a preference? What you want out of the gate? You want to do a wholesale, or do you want to do a buy and hold, or what are you thinking? Um, I want to do a subject two for myself because I love, love the idea of letting someone else have the mortgage and taking over someone else's mortgage. I so. mean, that may, you know what's funny is the four, the three guys in here. You got Matt Beard, Cody Barton, and myself. All three of us live in our own um, subject two homes. Yeah, I, that, that's why I'm here. I've seen you guys. I've watched you guys. Yeah. Um, I remember Matt sharing when he he just got his recently, right? He, yeah, uh, Matt. Matt. Um, Matt. I don't know if you want to chime in here real quick. Um, can he? Can Matt hear us? Hey, Matt. When when you because you're a licensed real estate agent that earns commission, would you have had a challenge? Qualifying for a mortgage if you didn't get that subject to? Uh, yeah, most likely, yeah. And it was good terms. It was a VA loan. He got a killer deal. He can't get a VA loan himself. See, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a business owner. You Same know, thing you, here. You have this too. People work for me. I, I had someone recently like worked for me for a little bit, got a mortgage, 
you know, like, yeah. like, like, like it's easier later, for them to get a mortgage yeah. than it is for you to get a mortgage. Yeah. But me, like the business owner, they don't believe you. Like you show them. Oh yeah. They know you, they know you're fu and, fudging your paperwork. And so. for me, like I've probably gotten 25 traditional mortgages in my life. Um, but I will never go back and do another traditional mortgage. Number one, most people that have W2 jobs are going to get better rates than me because as a business owner, and then number two, like yeah, it's more risky. Oh my gosh. So Matt, who's a licensed real estate agent, this is the thing about real estate agents they don't understand is they're going and trying, they're selling people houses all day long and introducing lenders to all these buyers. And most real estate agents who are working on commission can't get a, a house until they're on their second year of being a successful real estate agent. Matt could have started in real estate yesterday and got a subject to deal tomorrow with no qualification. So that's the cool thing. Mm -hmm. Cody, we had a deal pop up. This actually came from Matt. That actually, that lead came from Matt. Um, a lead pops up. We're going to buy that deal as a sub tail. So we're going to buy it subject to flip it and put it on the retail market and make a spread. And Cody comes to me. He's like, hey, man, um, can I have that house? And I was like, yeah, bro. That's the whole point of being in real estate investing is you can cherry pick what you want to live in. So that house is not too far from Tempe. That's the cool thing is that you're getting leads and you get to decide, I want to live in that. That's my house. I got yeah. a, I got a lead. So that's why I'm looking at this. I want yeah. to, you know, make money, but also find, eventually find one that that I'll live in, mm -hmm. and then maybe turn it into a rental after that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a four part series. This is part number one, setting up the system, doing all that stuff. Part number two is we're gonna do it. When do you want to do it? You want to do it next? Uh, whatever. Uh, let's have to find a time. I almost, I, we could do this remotely probably where all three of us are on um, stream. On yeah. yeah. I'm down. I almost want to text on for Sunday service, do this for sun, for whatever, but now you're texting on Sunday yeah, evening. It's probably like not a good fit. 7 p.m. on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I wouldn't text them. So what we'll do is we'll set this up for some time. When do you have time next week? Um, before the nine to five, but during the... Nine to five is busy most days. What if I we do it? Out. What if we do it in the evening, like six o'clock one of these days? Yeah, is that a good time to text? I yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Find people, time people are then. home. You're home. They're home too. Let's do six o'clock Tuesday because Monday is wholesale hotline. I can't do it. So Tuesday night, six p.m. What we'll do is we'll do two part two of the series and we'll get Rylas his first lead. Yeah, great. Yeah, Tuesday. You and I, I actually prefer to be face to face with you so you can watch me doing it and then watch me get on the phone with the seller live. Okay, that works. I can meet you Tuesday. Let's somewhere. do Tuesday, six o'clock here. Okay. Um, let me just double check. I can get here by six Tuesday. It shouldn't be an issue. So, guys, we're going to sign out. We appreciate you guys. We had a couple hundred people watching live today. Um, so, that's super helpful. And this is going to be part one of a four-part series of getting Rylas his first deal ever, utilizing batch leads as his primary source yeah, of lead flow. Tuesday. All right, this Tuesday. Been great. So thanks for all the questions. Everyone tuned in. Tuesday, 6 p.m. You and I are going to be here. We'll get Cody to like log in remotely so he doesn't have to drive all the way over here. All right, we'll be texting. And uh, we'll start texting right there live. Yeah, real estate investor now. Love Let's it. Do it. So. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks.